And so when we think about memory, we're thinking about memory sort of stretching this sort of the size of our reality. It's sort of memory that's allowing us to sort of travel through time beyond the immediate moment. And there's this notion of sort of we have experiences at, point, at some point in time. We're building knowledge. We're building different kinds of representations. And we have now are traversing through time, and we're in the present. And at that point in the present, to the extent that there are cues in the environment that allow us to make contact with the knowledge, the states that we, were, uh, we had in mind and brain in the past, we can kind of reactive out reactivate them and bring the present mind and brain into a state that resembles essentially traveling back to the state in which we were in in the past. We can then use that knowledge from the past in order to sort of know how to shape, uh, know how to sort of behave and act. And so from the psychology of memory, there's long held, uh, been this notion of memory as mental time travel. And what I want to share with you today is the advances that we've been making in neuroscience in terms of being able to sort of uh, characterize the mechanisms that give rise to different forms of learning and that underlie, in essence, this mental time travel, essentially neural time travel, traveling to the brain state through time to, to situate ourselves at some point in the past in order to inform the present or perhaps the future. Okay, and so what I'm going to be focusing on is just advances in neuroscience and cognitive neuroscience that sort of point to some of the mechanisms that allow us to stretch um, uh, the sizes of our current realities.